So my name is Mitko Kočkovski. I come from Skopje, Macedonia. Uh, I'm a WordPress developer since 2010. I'm a Kodovo. I'm a fo founder of uh, WebPigment, a WordPress agency based in Macedonia. I'm a Kodovo expert, and I'm a proud father. So uh, a bit about my talk today and what are we going to, to speak about is what, how, and why we should use Ajax, uh, how to use Ajax in WordPress, and how to use Ajax with WooCommerce. So it's pretty simple. Let's see, what is Ajax? Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and HTML, which is a client-side technique that communicates uh, with your server. How it works is that it loads server data without refreshing the page. And why should we do it? Because we want to build 21st century websites. So far, uh, the way that I've used Ajax in WordPress are three ways that we are going to go through today. So I'm really bad with names. So please excuse me for that. So the first way I say it, I named it uh, not WordPress way, which is actually creating a PHP file in the root of the uh, WordPress installation. On the first line, we include the WP config file, and then we can uh, put our WordPress code there. The other way that I've used uh, Ajax in WordPress is with using query strings. So uh, as you can see on the screen now, the code of the right is the base PHP file from the, uh, from the Sage team by roots. So if in the request there is a query string parameter is Ajax, uh, we are not printing the whole uh, header and footer of the team. We are just printing the content. And then easily with just a simple Ajax request, we just uh, replace the container of the main content. So now that we know those two things, we can see how <coughs> the WP Ajax functionality works. So it's basically an action that always starts with WP underline Ajax underline and the action. And then we put the function that should be executed when we, uh, when we hit that endpoint URL. Or we can use WP underline Ajax underline no privilege, which stands for not logged in users. And we can then we also put in the function that needs to be called as well. Uh, you have to remember that you always have to have a, a WP die or an exit at the end of that function. Otherwise, the WordPress itself will print out just one as a character. And then there is the WP JSON, which is now, as we all know, into the WordPress core. And it can be accessed through any, uh, any domain name slash WP minus JSON. So the way that we can use this is that we can register new routes. Uh, we can, uh, so a lot of people ask me, uh, when should I use the WP Ajax or where should I use the WP JSON? Some of them, when I ask them, well, what's your logic behind that? They say, I use WP Ajax when I want to print out HTML and I use WP JSON when I want to like retrieve a JSON, which is correct, but you can also use the WP JSON by using the functionality of uh, OB start, which will prevent anything from printing until you, you call the function OB underline get clean, which will provide everything that was printed out uh, between the OB underline start and OB get clean. So that's how you can use uh, an HTML into the JSON response. So now that we know how we can use uh, Ajax with WordPress, Let's see how we can leverage that into WooCommerce. Everything that I'm going to say today is already built in into the WooCommerce. It's just some tips and tricks that can help you move away, move around into the WooCommerce. So each time when you open a WooCommerce page, there is an Ajax request that refreshes the cart fragments. As you all know, uh, each WooCommerce page is hard and it does a lot of loading on the server, so most of them are cached all the time. So thanks to the card fragments, as you can see the, in an example, uh, thanks to the card fragments, the customer sees his uh, correct card. So the way that this works, as you can see on the JavaScript code, is that it gets the response fragments and then replaces the whole HTML elements. 
just uh, to leverage that, you can use the filter WooCommerce chat uh, to cart fragments and put your own container that will be replaced each time the page loads. But just be sure that you're using the container as well inside because it replaces the whole container. And if for some reason, if you want to call this function multiple times on the same page without reloading, then it won't work. Now, how many of you guys built a WooCommerce website and wanted to add like an Ajax functionality on the Add to Cart uh, on the product page? Uh, that happens to me very often. And it's pretty hard, especially with plugins like uh, custom fields on the product page and stuff, which then you'll need to like code in each time and each time the client adds a new field, etc. So I, I, I took a look at how WooCommerce Add to Cart functionality works. And the way that it works is that you can just do an any uh, page request. It can be a get or post request using the add to cart uh, parameter, which should be equal to the product or the product variation or the bulk product ID. And you can have uh, every, any other field or anything else into the same request. And WooCommerce will automatically uh, do that for you. So on the screen now, you're seeing an example of a custom uh, WP Ajax functionality that I've created, that it's using, uh, that it's getting the uh, WooCommerce notices, and based on that, it detects if the product was successfully added to cart or not. And besides that, uh, the cart, uh, the functionalities for WooCommerce that we spoke of, we can see the checkout, and the checkout itself has a lot of built-in functionalities. So, for example, the init checkout is. The f uh, is being called, which is a body, uh, it's a document uh, trigger. So each time someone lands on the checkout page, we can get that by in JavaScript by uh, init checkout. Or when someone submits the checkout form or updates the shipping method or the payment method, the update checkout and updated checkout are being triggered. If, uh, if there is an error in the submission, the checkout error will be triggered as well. Each time someone switches, for example, from the United States to the UK or the other way around, the country to state uh, change uh, triggers being triggered. And then when someone tries to place an order, there is the checkout pay place order and the gateway ID or just the checkout place order uh, trigger that are being called. And you can leverage that to, uh, like, if you return false in that function, then the checkout won't be submitted, and you can validate the fields or whatever you like to do and prevent that from submitting. So now that we know all of this, let's see how simple it will be for us to, like, add a previous or next product buttons on the product page without reloading the, the website. So as you can see here, I, I've created a simple function that on Ajax request using the action name as next product, it will call this function, and it will display the product content, which is located into the WooCommerce uh, folder, and it will return the HTML of the content area of the product, and then we can simply just replace all of that with the existing content, and the next product will appear. If we apply any of, uh, like, browser.js, uh, framework to, to all of this, we can simply have a fully Ajax uh, WordPress process uh, without any problems and pretty fast. So, or we can use the uh, WP JSON and retrieve the product ID and then build out the HTML with, uh, build out the HTML with JavaScript. I had to speed up because of the limited <laughs> time, so... <laughs> Thank you, Mitko. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Mitko. Thank you.